Murder in Rome. This is my list of the top five assassinations in Roman history. And by that, I mean the most important people that I think have been assassinated. So let's start at number five with Caligula. Now in 41 AD, he was the emperor of Rome. He was the third emperor. He had followed Tiberius, who had adopted him. Now, Caligula had quite a terrible childhood with Tiberius. Tiberius, according to the Roman reports that we have, was quite mm, unhinged. And that definitely rubbed off on Caligula. He was not a very good emperor. He was seen as mad by a lot of people. He had quite a lot of outrageous things that he liked to do. Do read up on Caligula. And therefore, there was a conspiracy to assassinate him. It was formed by his Praetorian Guard, which were the soldiers who were supposed to protect him. They slaughtered him, killed his wife and his son as well, and Claudius became the next emperor of Rome. Claudius is the one who invaded Britain. And so for me, Caligula's assassination was essential for Romanization of Britain. Coming in number four is Commodus. Now I've jumped quite far ahead in Roman history at this point. I'm in 192 AD now. Commodus was the son of Marcus Aurelius, who was the last of five good emperors as they're known. Marcus Aurelius had been very well loved by the people and was very stoic and very good at fighting. Commodus was slightly less like his father than people wished him to have been. And he was another slightly mad emperor who did some quite terrible things to his subjects. Again, I would encourage you to read up about Commodus. He's fascinating. What happened with Commodus' assassination is that his wife found out that he was planning to murder her. And so she tried to poison him, but failed. At this point, however, she had got so many people involved in the conspiracy to kill her husband, the emperor, that there was no going back. And so she and some of Commodus' closest advisors sent a man called Narcissus, who was a wrestler, Commodus' personal trainer, to strangle him in the bath. And his death then led to what we call the Year of the Five Emperors, because in one year there were five emperors. So it was quite a bit of turmoil, and that was very important for the development of the Roman Empire. Coming in third for me would be Tiberius Sempronius Gracchus. He is someone that very few people have heard of. The reason for that is that he's from 133 BC. And that's sort of the period before the first triumvirate and all the exciting things with the fall of the Republic. But I think he's very important. The reason for that is that he was a popularist. He was one of the first politicians who realised that the common people in Rome made up a huge amount of the voter base. And that if they were seen to advance the interests of the common people, they would get the vote of the common people. So Tiberius Sempronius Gracchus was a popularist. He set forward an idea of land reform, that all of these huge estates that the people in the Senate owned and were farmed by slaves, some of that should be taken off them, they should be bought off the rich of Rome and given to the people, especially what was called the Aga Publicus, the public land, land that no one owned in Italy. He said it should be given to the urban poor. As you can imagine, that made him very popular with the urban poor. He was a tribune of the plebs, so he was a tribune of the normal common people, people who weren't the patricians, the very wealthy old families. And he used his power as tribune to push through this land reform bill. The Senate had already denied it. They said no. But he ignored the Senate and went straight to the people who voted on it. Now, unfortunately, one of his fellow tribunes said, no, this is not what we're going to do. We're not going to give all this land to the people. Greco said, OK, new bill. Should we get rid of this guy? The people all said, yeah, let's get rid of him. So they kicked out that other tribune and then Tiberius Gracchus put forward the land reform bill again, which passed. This freaked the Senate out. They were so worried that he had so much power over the people that they mobbed him to death. He and 300 of his closest supporters were beaten to death by members of the Senate and their bodyguards and their bodies were thrown into the Tiber. So quite a horrific end for Tiberius Sempronius Gracchus but it does show that he had a lot of power and it frightened the Senate. That will become important later. Second, I think, has to be Remus. Now, I've gone way back, 753 BC to the founding of Rome, when Romulus and Remus, twin brothers, decided they wanted to found their own city. But they couldn't decide where. Romulus wanted this hill, Remus wanted a different hill. And so they said, we will wait for a sign from the gods to tell us who get to pick where our city's going to be. Remus saw six vultures and thought, hooray, 
Jupiter has sent me a sign saying I should build my city where I want to, which is the Aventine Hill. Romulus then almost immediately saw 12 vultures and said, well, I'm going to build my city on the Palatine Hill. Remus said, but I saw the vultures first. Romulus said, well, I saw more. They each build their own city. There are several versions of this story. My favourite one is that, like any irritating sibling, one of the brothers pretended to invade the other brother's city by stepping over their newly formed walls that were still only sort of ankle height, and the other one, in a fit of rage, pulled out his sword. The brothers fought. Unfortunately for Remus, he did not survive. Romulus, therefore, encompassed Remus's new city into his own and named it after himself, Rome. It would have been quite a different story if Remus had won. Perhaps we would be talking about Reem. But coming in first has to be Julius Caesar. I couldn't talk about murders in Rome without talking about him. In 44 BC, Julius Caesar became dictator perpetuo. And that means dictator for life, effectively. Dictator was usually an emergency power you only got for about six months and then you gave it back once you had sorted out a crisis. He got voted by the Senate to dictator forever. This upset a lot of the Senate. Caesar had a lot of the Senate on his side, but a good proportion were not. And they began a conspiracy. They were calling themselves the liberators. They were going to free Rome from the tyranny of Caesar. On the Ides of March in 44 BC, which is the 15th of March, they gathered in the Senate House and they waited for Caesar to arrive. They lured him there with a rumour that they were going to proclaim him King of Rome. And their idea was that if he turned up, that's what he wanted. He wanted to be king. Unfortunately for Caesar, one of his most trusted allies told him he had to come. But this most trusted ally was also a member of the Liberators. And so Julius Caesar was stabbed to death in the Senate House that day. Now, unfortunately for the Liberators, this backfired massively because about 15 years later, Augustus was in sole power in Rome. He was called Octavian at the time. He was Julius Caesar's adopted son, and he became the first official emperor of Rome. So really, it had the complete opposite effect of what these liberators wanted. And they're my top five Roman assassinations. Caesar, Remus, Gracchus, Commodus, Caligula. Did I miss anyone important out? Who do you think should have been there? Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you next time on Bambas Bat.